Well, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's having a great and wonderful day. Nice way to start today. Beautiful spring day. Waiting for traffic. <laughs> I take it everybody's back at work. Nigga spent 10 minutes just trying to get out of the parking lot. Okay, yeah. Good grief. Well, <laughs> what a way to start today. Traffic, traffic everywhere, there's traffic. I hope you're having a great one. It is somewhat springtime. It is awesome! Finally! Spring has sprung! Weeds are growing! Okay, light screen. Let's move. Wait, don't stay green forever. Alright. Can I make it? Can I make it? Please let me make it. Can I make it? Make it. Yeah, yay, we made it. All right. Feel that 650 cc power. Oh, oh, oh. All righty, well. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm distracted and sidetracked as always. So if you're having a great, wonderful day. If you're uh, enjoying the warmer weather, getting out to bits, then I must go to work. Gotta meet the coins, I can buy the toys. Yeah, I'm so ready for the spring. As, uh, as usual, I got all these plans, these summer projects, the spring plans, gotta get out. To get all the uh, all the winter damage to take care of. Fertilizing the yard, yard yesterday. And do all the uh, do all the wonderful spring prep, winter repair. Gets me outside. I love being outside. Get that fresh air. Look all spruced up. Make it look like I can. So definitely looking forward to that. So hoping the weather don't get too nice because the weather's too nice. I'd rather ride. I don't want to work. I don't want to get all these uh, projects done in the evening. I stay in daylight longer. The weather's good. I'm going to get out for my evening ride after work. I don't want to do the, uh, the household projects. So, I want it to be nice so we can get that chores done. But if I don't want it too nice, then we want to ride. got to get some window therapy. So, you know, get out and enjoy the, enjoy the, the wind in my helmets again. Never know, at least so far the grass is still dormant. And I'm starting to see the, the weeds pop up. We're seeing a little greenery. At least for now the grass is still dormant, so. We won't have that too much. And the wet bit the winter was. All that snow. And typically the, uh, the spring is nice and wet. So usually it don't take long. Once the April showers start coming, don't worry about the May flowers. April showers start coming. Start seeing the uh, grass pop up quickly. They start mowing twice a week. 
the start. So, let's see how. It's actually the Earth story turned green. So, we'll see, it won't be long. They don't have that to complain about. Seasons change. Complaints change, but you still complain. Never be happy. I am happy that we're finally getting our tractor supply here. That'll be nice. The uh, camera been gone for several years. I heard rumors years ago that we're getting a tractor supply. But didn't happen, didn't happen, but now apparently everything got approved, so we're going to get our tractor supply. That'd be nice having that a lot closer. Right now, you either go to Carlisle, Dillsburg, or, or uh, Newport. So, it'd be nice to have one with the Clissa. Closer to the end. Activity at the rail yard yet. Definitely getting out, enjoy the beautiful day, see what the day has in store. Always see, uh, always see the interesting unknown. What will the day bring? Very little is planned. To start the day, you want to it don't take long to show up a day. Where you know it's 5 o'clock, time to go home and do your own stuff. Time flies when you have fun, I guess. So, I'm up for my ramblings for a moment. Let's see if anything else happens, pops in the mind. But, until next time, if you have a great and wonderful day, be safe. Figuring out enjoying spring a bit. Enjoy spring as it sprung for the spring breaks. And we go from beautiful, comfortable weather to <laughs> to a not nauseating summer roasting, humidity, all that fun. So let's see. Get out and enjoy. It's spring is a beautiful time. Everything starts to come to life. Makes you feel all alive. Sad. Not a lot of them going below the speed limit. But it's a ram, so. Yeah. What do you expect? Hey, have a good one, y'all. Okay, well, take two. For some reason, typical GoPro fashion, it decided to stop. Minute and 20 in. So we'll see if I get more than a minute and 20 this time. So, what was I saying? Where did I left off? I don't remember. That was eight hours ago. But, I will say, <laughs> I didn't remember part of it. So, anyway, so the thought was about the different kind of vloggers and how they handle anonymity and meeting up and stuff. And anyway, what Mr. 20 West was talking about sparked the thought in my head, which is interesting. I follow a lot of DIYers, and because of my job, I follow a lot of tradesmen, so I follow the uh, landscapers, the electricians, the plumbers, all that stuff, because it's kind of all the stuff that I got to deal with. And when you look at a typical motor vlogger, not only do they usually not use their real name, but of course, you know, they, uh, well, let me say it this way. 
Because the one who has over a million followers by now, he always he used to say in earlier days, he would ride 20 miles from his apartment before he would blog just so people could not find out where he lived. Now, you take that on to the uh, landscapers and the other tradesmen that I follow. Well, they have their name, license number, phone number. They have all their contact information right in their truck. So you can Google them and you can find out their business, an address, a phone number. I mean, it's out there. They have their license numbers. We'll look that up to the state. So you can pretty much find all their contact information. Freely give it out on YouTube. Yet, as funny as moto bloggers, you don't see that. You know, we'll get post office boxes, but you know, for the most part, people don't use their real names, moto bloggers. They definitely don't give out a phone number. Well, Chris Caliente will, he does a um, talking thing, but that's where it's a burner phone. But it's just interesting how moto vloggers have this sense of anonymity, which I understand because I also heard plenty of horror stories from stalkers and stuff. But that can be wondering why? Is it the community? Do, for some reason, motorcyclists kind of see themselves as as a privilege that they can stalk their motor vlogging friends? I mean, is this stuff just non-existent with other people? With other communities? I don't know. That's kind of what I was curious about when you thought on that, because it seems odd that the tradesmen, the uh, DIYers, they use their business name, you know, they use their real name. And if not, you can easily get that on Google. Because you can look up their, uh, their state license, so you can get their name, you get their address. Not any business address, but you also get their home addresses. So, I mean, it's all free out in public. I just, I can't believe that. I don't know. Is a biker community really that bad that you have to uh, have to be scared to death of stalkers and, and unsavory types that you don't have with uh, with any other community? I don't know. I kind of feel kind of feel uh, feel bad. I guess guilty. I don't know. It kind of gives me a weird sense that the moto community is filled with the uh, that many unsavory people that uh, that everybody feels the need to uh, to hide their identity in such a way that they don't in other communities. I don't know. So, what are your thoughts? Do you, uh, who else do you follow you know, as far as topics? And do you see the same thing on topics? Which brought up the other interesting part was what he mentioned, which also, I got them all, also seemed uh, interesting too. We go to uh, Moto Vlogger meetups and stuff. When you meet motor vloggers, you rarely hear people talk about motorcycles. Motorcycles? Motorcycles. There we go. But when you hear people talking to their motor vlogger friends, you don't hear them talk about motorcycles. You often hear them talk about vlogging. What cameras do you use? What, uh, editing software you use. Here are all these questions of how to be a motor vlogger. 
from other vloggers. But when you see the meetups from other content creators, you don't hear the same questions. When there's a meetup from other content creators, you hear questions about their life, about their business, about what they do. The questions are just different. For some reason, everybody who watches a motor vlogger, when they get to talk about a motor vlogger, all they seem to want to know is how to become a motor vlogger. What setup do they use? What microphone do they use? It was like the one that I, I've been watching lately. You know, being in uh, like demolition and type stuff. Yeah, a lot of the comments are just totally different than what you see on metal vlogging channels. And it just seemed odd. I don't know. Is it a... Uh, <laughs> Is it just a, uh, just a motor vlogging thing? I don't know. That's kind of what I'm curious about your experience, what your thought. Or if you're one of those that, uh, that you see on the, uh, in the comments, always say, No, all I watch is your channel. All I watch is motor vloggers. I don't know. I have too many different interests. And uh, and stuff. I don't. I don't just watch one kind of creation, one kind of content. I, uh, I have a lot of different interests, and I'm sure a lot of people do. So YouTube is a great tool for that. But it's just interesting how you brought that up. Got me thinking. Yeah, you know, just comments, meetups. Now, also, there's just so difference between the moto community and a general general community. I don't know what the word is for that. But do you notice that too? Is it just a uh, coincidence that I notice? Um, uh, what you think? All right. So I guess that's done with my ramblings for now. Hopefully I got more than a minute 30 this time. Thank you for this wonderful GoPro technology. So. <laughs> we'll see. Hopefully I got more than what I got before. If I did, catch y'all later. Have a great wonderful day.